So I'd like to start by asking a few quick questions. How many of you have said, I'm okay, I feel good, nothing wrong here, when actually you don't feel great, it's not all good here, and you're not okay? Fair enough. Uh, now, girls only, how many of you would reach out to a friend or a family member when you're feeling stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? Now, guys, same question. How many of you would reach out to a friend or family member when you're feeling stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed? Okay. So my name is Henry and I'm here today to talk about how toxic masculinity is negatively impacting men's mental health. If you would have said to me on the 5th of March 2020 that I would be stood here today on this stage delivering this talk, I wouldn't have believed you. Why the 5th of March 2020? That's a very specific date. I know, I know. So let me tell you why. This is something that I haven't really shared publicly before. So why not do it on arguably one of the biggest talking platforms here today? I woke up on this day, the 5th of March, 2020, feeling stressed, anxious, overwhelmed. And initially I was physically unable to get up out of bed. I don't think I'd ever felt so alone, alone or tired. But why did I feel like this? Well, the practice of law is tough. You may know somebody who's currently doing their law studies or who are currently practicing as a lawyer and they will probably tell you that it's just a little bit difficult, right? That, coupled with trying to navigate your life in your mid-twenties, things such as finances, getting your own place, relationships, moving out, a global pandemic, all just became a little bit too much. So. How did we get here? How did we get to this point? Well, I woke up and I went into the office as normal and it was all just a bit overwhelming. Whether it's school or we're working, how we spend our time during the work week is where we spend most of our days. So when you've got a supportive environment, when you have teaching staff, peers, coworkers that are there to support and guide you, it lightens the load, so to speak. But what if you don't have that? What if you have the opposite? What if you have somebody who you don't quite know where you stand with, somebody who doesn't support you, and somebody who gaslights you? What would you do? Well, in my case, what I would do is I would come into the office early to try and get some work done without them around. I would go to the bathroom and throw up because I was so anxious, stressed, and overwhelmed. I would go to the bathroom and cry because I couldn't handle the working day. And then I'd go back up to my desk and carry on working. I knew I had to do something. I knew I couldn't keep going on like this, but I was kind of embarrassed and I thought, maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Thankfully, a close friend of mine reached out because they realized that something wasn't quite right. We also happen to be good friends. So they would take me for coffees before work. They would catch up with me during the day to make sure that I was doing okay. And gradually over time, I'd start telling them more and more about how I was feeling. A weight lifted, sharing my problems with somebody else. Over time, I started telling my friend more and more. And I started to realize that everything that was making me stressed, anxious, and overwhelmed was within my control to change. So with the support and guidance that I needed, that's what I did. It may come as no surprise that the UK Mental Health Foundation found that one in eight men suffer with some kind of general anxiety or stress disorder. But it's likely that those figures are actually higher, and this is because a lot of cases go undiagnosed or unreported due to the stigma around men reporting or sharing their problems. But why is there such a stigma around men talking about their problems? Well, men face unique challenges in that from a young age, we are encouraged to suppress our emotions, told that boys will be boys, taught to be self-reliant and not talk about how we are feeling, encouraged to have a masculine mindset and laddish behavior, 
reinforced by the behaviors that society places on us. So if men aren't talking about the mental health problems, what are they doing? Well, research by the Harvard Business Review suggests the following three things, escapism, withdrawal, and externalization. Escapism, turning to alcohol or substance abuse. Men are three times more likely to turn to alcohol, especially drinking alone. The same with substance abuse. Withdrawal, canceling plans, taking more sick days, not showing up to those school socials, not showing up to those work activities. And externalization, exhibiting antisocial behaviors towards others, low impulse control, such as reckless spending, and high levels of irritability. The most shocking risk of men not talking about their, men's, their mental health is male suicide. Suicide is a complex issue, and generally, there isn't one specific event or factor that results in somebody taking their own life. It's usually a combination of a number of factors, such as personal, community, or societal issues. Research by the UK government found that men who kill themselves are most likely from a lower socioeconomic group and are below the age of 50. So it is clear that men's mental health and male suicide are critical issues that affect all of us. But what can we do? What can we as a collective do to support men in their mental health journey? Well, I think there are three key ways that we can support them. The first is recognizing that it starts with a conversation. The second are small lifestyle changes that we can all make to help improve our lives. And the final one is recognizing that men's mental well-being is a societal issue and not just an issue for men. So let's start with the first one. It starts with the conversation. One of the most common themes amongst men who are struggling with their mental health is how lonely and isolated they felt from the people, places, and networks around them. So we need to create a space where men feel comfortable and encouraged to talk about how they, how they are feeling. How can we do this? Well, if you have a mate or a family member who you think they've been a bit quiet, I've not heard from them in a while, why do they keep canceling the plans? Well, reach out to them, send them a text message, give them a phone call, FaceTime them. It could make all the difference. Small lifestyle changes. We can all make these small lifestyle changes, which will have a huge positive impact in our lives. Many men who have gone through periods of crisis and built themselves back up have tried these. They have helped me, and I hope that they may help you too. These include cutting down on alcohol. Whilst tempting, the depressive elements of alcohol actually make us feel worse. Physical activity. When we move, our bodies release positive endorphins. Many men, again, who have gone through periods of crisis and were building themselves back up, heavily invested in activities that made them feel good, allowed them to support others, and created strong networks. So if you can, go for that brisk walk, because it can make all the difference. It's a nice, easy way to start. If a mate seems off, send them a message. See if they want to go to the gym for a walk, for a run, to grab a coffee. And finally, let's recognize that we also need to stay social. And I don't mean on social media. Physically being around other people can make us feel good, and it can reduce feelings of loneliness. And the last way that I think that we can positively push this conversation forward is by recognizing that men's mental health and men's well-being is a issue for all of us, not just for men. We all have a role to play in pushing this agenda forwards. So how can we do that? Well, we can start by challenging gender stereotypes. We can let men know that there are resources available to them to talk about, to share their problems. And we can also develop specific programs for men to help them that cover the unique challenges that men face.
together, let's build a space where we can all feel safe talking about and sharing our vulnerabilities. All right, cheers.